Hey winemakers, Adam here with Village Winery Home Winemaking and today we're going to be troubleshooting a cloudy wine. I started this wine about a month ago from grapes harvested from my family's farm a few miles up the road. The varietals in this wine are Marichal Foch, Concord, Vignol, and Edelweiss. I live in New England and New England is not famous for grapes. Grapes around here are tend to range from acidic to tart to sour. So in this batch, I planned on leaving plenty of sugar in to balance out that acidity. When I produce an off-dried, a semi-sweet wine, I prefer to stop fermentation early rather than add sugar at the end. In my opinion, it enhances the varietal character of the wine. And stopping fermentation was where I ran into some problems with this wine. I fermented it in that stainless steel jacketed fermenter, but I only pressed enough juice to bring the liquid level about halfway up that jacket line. So in a normal batch of wine, I can get that fermenter down to about 30 degrees Fahrenheit, below the freezing point of water, and that deactivates the yeast and causes it to settle. But in this batch, when I only filled it up about halfway up that jacket line, I could only get the batch down to about 38 degrees Fahrenheit. And that slowed the fermentation tremendously, but it didn't stop it. So then I figured I would add enough sulfite to kill the yeast. So I used Winemaker Magazine's sulfite calculator. Uh, I dumped it in, mixed it up, and the yeast kept going. So at this point, I was pretty frustrated. So I said, I'm going to rack the wine off the leaves of the fermenter, put it into another container, add chitosan and kiesel to coagulate whatever's left in there, settle it out, and then sterile filter it. So I did just that. I added chitosan and kiesel I ran it through a sterile filter, and this is the result a nice hazy wine. Now, haze in wine usually comes from one of three places. During fermentation, yeast and debris from the fruit that you're using tends to be held in suspension, but it usually falls out after fermentation just because it, it's so heavy. But post-fermentation, haze will usually come from pectin if you're using fruit or protein. And knowing that leads me to believe that what we're dealing with here is protein haze. I may have been a little bit overzealous with the chitosan in fining. I happen to know that adding a bentonite slurry to your wine is a great way to eliminate protein haze. So I'm going to go upstairs and mix up a 5% bentonite slurry. I'm going to come back down and we're going to do bentonite bench trials. So here is our 5% by mass bentonite slurry that I just prepared in the kitchen. And in our bench trial, we're going to have a control and we're going to test 50 milliliters of slurry per liter of wine, 100 milliliters per liter, 150 milliliters per liter, and 200 milliliters of slurry per liter of wine. So here's the setup of our bentonite trial. I'm gonna put these on my shelf over here. I'm gonna put the lid on my slurry so we can come back to this later. And once we see results, I'm gonna set this back up and show them to you. And here we are two days later. The wine has been on the shelf under a cover for two days. I've decanted the wine off the sediment twice and look at the results. From the lowest concentration to the highest, there's almost no haze in any of them. Now I'm going to do a taste test because to me, it's obvious that the wine with the most bentonite added is the clearest. But if we add too much bentonite, 
oftentimes it'll pull out some of the varietal flavor of your wine. It removes some of those flavor compounds. So in our taste test, I'm gonna start from the lowest concentration, go to the highest, and see where in this bentonite edition spectrum I start to lose the nice varietal flavor of the wine. Already right here, I'm sensing the little decrease in the flavor compounds. Very similar to the previous. much less flavor in the last one. I'm gonna go back to the first. Oh yeah, that's a big difference. I'm gonna go with the lowest concentration because our wine is very clear and it has the most flavor. That lowest concentration from our bench trial was 50 milliliters of slurry per liter of wine. So we have about three liters of wine in this jug. I'm gonna add 150 milliliters of slurry. We'll give this drug a good shake and put it back on the shelf overnight. Now we'll come back tomorrow and see what our wine looks like. So here we are actually five days later. One day is not enough time to let the bentonite clear up the wine, but five days later, and you can see right through this. So right now I'm going to rack the clarified wine off the fining lees, and then we're gonna run the clarified wine through a filter. In that last video, I, I sucked up a little sediment when I was transferring into this carboy, and a little sediment goes a long way into making your wine cloudy. So it got a little cloudy, I put it on the shelf, came back today, tried again, didn't suck up any sediment. And look how nice that looks. That is clear, that's crisp. And I'm gonna do one more step to clear it up even more. So now that we've cleared the wine up using bentonite, I'm gonna clear it up even more with my Buon Vino mini jet filter using fine filter pads. So here we go. We're gonna really clear this up. Oh my goodness, would you look at this? We are back to that kind of Provence style rosé color that we had before we added the bentonite and it's crystal clear. This is beautiful. I'm gonna take a sip and see what I'm really dealing with. That is nice. I am super pleased with the way this wine came out. I hope what you took from this is that if you have a hazy wine, try bentonite, try filtering, and you could be in the clear. I hope you enjoyed watching me fix this wine. I know I enjoyed doing the fixing. I hope to see you back in the wine lab soon. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.